Hi, this is part two of a problem, taking a look at what happens if a mass slides down a frictionless ramp, collides with a bar on a pivot, and then that pivot swings out to some angle before stopping. And we want to be able to come up with an expression for how to figure out what that final angle is. So there were a few parts that we did in part one. We took a look at using conservation of energy to figure out how fast that mass would be traveling before the collision. And we said the speed before the collision would be the square root of 2 times the strength of gravity times the distance the mass fell, h. We then took a look at the collision, conserving angular momentum, and we said when we conserve angular momentum, the angular velocity of this object that's free to rotate, the little mass stuck to a bar of mass big M, would be equal to our little mass m times its speed, the square root of 2, times gravity, times the height that it fell, divided by the little mass plus one-third the big mass times the length of the bar d. And that piece came out of the total rotational inertia of this system. The inertia of a bar around its end of one-third times the mass times the distance squared, plus the inertia of that mass treating it like a particle. The mass times the length of the bar d squared. Well, this final piece, again, is going to be conservation of energy. Only here we have rotational kinetic energy initially. So for rotational kinetic energy, the rotational kinetic energy of an object is going to be one-half times the inertia of the object times omega squared. Well, I, we said, is the mass times the length squared plus one-third times the mass of the bar times the length squared. And if I square this piece here, I get the mass squared times two times gravity times the height divided by this squared. Well, if I square the denominator of omega, that gives me m d squared plus one-third big M d squared divided by m d squared plus one-third big M d squared times m plus one-third times the big mass of the bar. Well, that inertia is going to cancel out. And what we're left with is a kinetic energy immediately after the collision that's equal to the mass that was in motion squared times gravity times the distance that mass initially fell divided by that mass plus one-third the mass of the bar. Now, to figure out the angle, we need to take a look at the change in potential energy. So at the bottom, we'll say that the potential energy was zero when we have this kinetic energy, and it'll keep rotating until it stops. So at the top, we'd have a kinetic energy of zero. And what happens is that little mass changes its height, delta y, the center of mass of our bar is also going to change its height, but those two changes in height aren't the same, as we'll see by taking a look at a little bit of trigonometry. So to figure out the change in height of this little mass, initially it starts a distance d away from our pivot point. But then, when it rotates, that distance d forms the hypotenuse of a triangle. And I could draw in a horizontal line, and that would give me a right triangle, where d is the hypotenuse, this is some unknown piece, but have gone over some angle theta, and this y component here would just be equal to my distance d times the cosine of the angle theta that it rotated over. So for that little mass, the change in height is going to be its original sort of distance, d, minus this y component here, which is d times the cosine of theta. So that would give us the distance times the quantity, 1 minus the cosine of theta. For the bar, though, the center of mass is going to be in the center of the bar, as long as it's uniform. So that means that center of mass starts at half the length of the bar from the pivot point. And when it ends, it's still based on half the length of the bar. So for the large mass, its change in height is just half the change in height 
for the mass at the end of the bar. So, for our total potential energy change then, we'd have the little mass times gravity times the length of the bar times 1 minus the cosine of theta. For the bar, we'd have the mass of the bar times gravity times half the length of the bar, d over 2, times 1 minus the cosine of theta, and that would be equal to the kinetic energy that we just calculated. So now, what we need to do is take this and solve it for our angle theta. Well, gravity, gravity, gravity shows up in all pieces, which means gravity cancels out. This will work on any planet, as long as there's some gravity, this is going to be okay. Now here I would have the little mass times my distance d, big mass times my distance d over 2, half the length of the bar. So I'm going to take that term and divide both sides. So where that leaves me, and we're done with this, we can take it away. So where that leaves us then is going to be 1 minus the cosine of our angle theta is going to be our little mass squared, oh, the strength of gravity went away, times the distance that the object fell h divided by our original denominator, the little mass, plus one third the mass of the bar, and then when I divide it out by what remains behind, that would give me the little mass times the length of the bar d, plus the mass of the bar, divided by 2 times this distance d, which I could distribute out. So, to find our angle, I could add the cosine to the other side, subtract the quantity that I've written on the right-hand side from both sides, and that tells me that the cosine of the angle would be 1 minus the mass squared, times the distance it fell, divided by the quantity little mass plus a third the big mass, times the quantity little mass plus half the big mass, times the length of the bar. And then, to find the angle, we would need to take the inverse cosine of whatever result that we get here. Thank you for watching part two.